It's a great Tuesday morning. Welcome back to BT Vancouver. But we are going to brighten things up right now. Uh, we're talking COVID-19 restrictions. They are gradually being lifted. But uh, according to new uh, results in a poll, a vast majority of Canadians are bracing for a second wave. And when we hone in on the mask issue, a lot of Canadians as well saying masks should be mandatory in public or confined spaces. 53% of them saying we should be wearing coverings in uh, malls, on public transit. Let's bring in family physician Dr. Yvette Liu to talk about this. Good morning to you once again. Good morning. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. Let's first of all talk about why do we have these new guidelines for mask use in Canada? So the WHO has new guidelines and the reason why is because COVID-19 is a new disease and as we learn more about it, we've been gathering more evidence and now there is increasing evidence that there are people who are asymptomatic and that these people may be able to spread the virus. There's also increasing evidence of pre-symptomatic spread. So about a day or two before you start showing symptoms, you may be able to spread the virus. Now, the main mode of transmission is still by symptomatic people in close contact, but there are these other contributing means of spread that we want to be cautious about, and mask use may be able to help with that. Okay, let's delve into that little, a little bit and look at some of the key changes with regards to who should be wearing masks and when. Give us some of the details on that. So the WHO does not recommend widespread mask use for healthy people in the population. But in areas where there is known community transmission or known outbreaks, they do recommend masks in certain situations. So they are recommending uh, masks for healthcare workers in clinical settings. So if you're in a clinical ward, they are recommending that you wear a mask. And then for the general public, they're recommending non-medical masks for people when they are in settings where physically physical distancing is impossible. So masks, we have to remember, are just one part of a wider strategy. They don't replace other things. So right. settings in which physical distancing are difficult or impossible would be situations like public transit, a crowded store, uh, if people are living in crowded environments like refugee camps or in slums at uh, like protest mm -hmm. rallies. And, you know, if you are at the hairdresser, you have to be close to someone. Or if you're a server at the restaurant, you may have to be close to someone when you put down your their, their food in front of them. So those kinds of situations are when non-medical masks are recommended for the general public. Now, the other thing the WHO has recommended, which is very interesting and which differs from what we recommend in BC and Canada, mm -hmm. is they do recommend a medical mask in certain situations. They're looking at vulnerable vulnerable populations, like people who are over the age of 60 and people who have pre-existing conditions that might make them more vulnerable to COVID-19, like heart disease, cerebrovascular disease, hypertension or high blood pressure, diabetes, immunosuppression, and a cancer diagnosis. So they're recommending um, a medical mask for their those, the protection of those people, which differs from recommendations for everyone else, which is for source control, which is to keep particles inside yourself, to keep you from spreading particles to others. That's called source control. So that's all great information from a medical perspective in terms of stopping transmission. But anecdotally, yes. can you speak about the psychology of like, if I'm talking to you, say, and we're in a room two meters apart and we both got masks on, does it make someone sort of feel more safe when they're interacting with someone who is wearing a mask? I think psychologically it can make people feel more safe and it can make people feel like they're doing something that, that they're helping out um, because the mask is used for source control to help protect you from spreading accidentally the virus to others. It is important to remember that if you're using a mask, you have to use good mask hygiene because mm -hmm. if you touch something and then you touch your face to adjust your mask, you could actually give the virus to yourself. And wow. it's important, yeah, it's important, I think, that masks, um, that we don't make masks mandatory for everyone because some people can't wear masks. Like children under two should not be wearing masks because they can't take it off, so that could be dangerous. And then certain people who have medical conditions or certain disabilities are also unable to wear masks. So masks should be for specific situations. And as we close it out, what are some of the recommendations from the WHO when it comes to non-medical masks and the various types of material that can be used? Yes, yeah, so they have given a lot of recommendations in their document about materials. They recommend a three-layer mask, minimum of three layers, and then they recommend an outer hydrophobic layer, meaning a water repellent layer, mm. an inner absorbent layer, and then a middle layer that can be either absorbent or water repellent. And then they do have some notations about different materials. So they look at breathability and filtration factor for the mask, and they want a filtration factor of at least three. So to give an example, um, 
certain forms of cotton, like a T-shirt that's woven, would have a filtration factor of seven. Mm -hmm. But like a handkerchief would only have a filtration factor of 0.5, and silk has a filtration factor of 2.8. So they have a lot of information about this. You can look on their website, but you want to have a filtration factor of at least three, or else it's not doing very much. Wow, fascinating stuff. I got a haircut on Friday, and I had to wear a mask the entire time. It was a little awkward at first, but I felt safe, secure, and it's part of the new norm. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and, and in a haircut, you're very close together. Yeah, so exactly. you can't physical distance. So that's when that's one of the situations when you probably want to be wearing a mask if you can. Great stuff, Dr. Lou. Thanks so much. We'll get this online for our viewers. We really appreciate your uh, time today. Yes, good to see you. You too. We'll take care there. That's Dr. Yvette Lou, family physician, good friend of BT.